we're talking about systems and systems models. So what is a system anyway? A system is an organized group of parts that work together to do something. And they're everywhere, in the natural world and in our built environments, designed by humans. Like rivers, airplanes, owls, germs, trees, flowers, snakes, apartments, scooters, dogs, everything is a system. And they're even inside of us. There's the skeletal system, the muscular system, the respiratory system, and the circulatory system. In fact, you could say that we're just one big system made up of other systems. Lots of systems have other systems inside of them, or they may be part of a much larger, more complex system. Like our planet, it's got lots of systems, like atmosphere and hydrosphere and biosphere, but Earth is also part of the solar system that revolves around our sun, which is part of the galaxy, which is part of the universe. There are systems inside of systems, inside of systems, inside of, well, you get the idea. These are called nested systems. They exist inside other systems. One of the cool things about systems is what they teach us about collaboration. By working together or collectively, parts are able to do something that an individual part could not do on its own. Like your digestive system. Your digestive system is like a machine and the job or function of the digestive system is to help you break down the food you eat and also to absorb nutrients in the food for energy. Digestion starts in your mouth and ends, well, on the back end. And without, say, your stomach, a big part of the digestive system, the entire system wouldn't work as well or even function at all. One of the cool things about systems is the ability to change but some systems work to maintain a stable environment, what's known as homeostasis. Let's look at the predator and prey relationship. As the rabbit population increases, there's more food for the mountain lions. So the mountain lion population increases. But as the mountain lion population increases, they eat more rabbits, so the rabbit population decreases. Which means less food for the mountain lions, so their population declines again creating this sort of a wave. This is also an example of a negative feedback loop. Negative feedback loops maintain a stable balance by counteracting change. The prey and the predator populations keep each other in check. Neither population grows too large or shrinks too small. Now, negative doesn't mean it's a bad thing, it just means it's preventing change. Whereas positive feedback loops, on the other hand, are good at creating or increasing change. When plants die, their organic matter returns to the soil, providing nutrients and helping to grow more plants. When those plants die, they provide more nutrients and then more plants can grow. This change in the environment is amplified or increased over time, which is why it's called a positive feedback loop. Systems are made up of interrelationships. The different parts have cause and effect relationships. And through the use of system models, we can get a better understanding of those relationships. System models helps us to investigate phenomena or processes that happen too fast, too slow, or on too small or too large of a scale to observe directly. Think about the phases of the moon. If we wanted to see all the phases of the moon, we'd have to wait for a lunar or moon cycle to complete. But models of the moon phases give us the opportunity to see the moon pattern right before our eyes. System models are representations of systems. They help us understand how a system functions or works, and they can help us make predictions. And having a better understanding of systems can help us humans create more effective system designs. At the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, they are working with two enormous and very important systems. They keep the lights on and the water running to more than a million Los Angeles homes and businesses. But their work doesn't stop there. They also help residential, business, and industrial customers find ways to conserve water and energy and save money by analyzing the efficiency of their systems. So that's good business and good for the environment. It's a win-win. Whether it's a low-flow showerhead or a high-tech solar roof, 
the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power is there to help. To find out how the LADWP can help you save money and conserve water and energy, visit LADWP.com forward slash save. And to learn more about putting your scientific mind to work to help keep those big systems running in our city, visit LADWP.com forward slash careers.